We're going to continue our coverage of aggregate operations in Java streams, focusing now on some of the most common so-called intermediate operations. We'll start off by talking about map and map to int. And you'll see that these operations apply to both sequential and parallel streams. So as always, being a good streams programmer makes you a better parallel streams programmer, as you'll discover later. And we're going to continue to showcase our simple search stream program, the one that searches for the names of the musical notes in the lyrics to the Do Re Mi song. And you can get access to all the source code here at the bottom of the, at the link in my GitHub repository at the bottom of the slide. Recall that intermediate operations are lazy. And what that means is they don't start to run until the terminal operation is reached. And I'll talk a bit more later about how all this works and the data structures that are used internally by Java streams, but that won't happen right away. We'll get to that in, the, in a little bit. So the particular intermediate operations we're going to focus on right now are some of the most popular ones, in particular the map operation. And then there's a variant of map that works on so-called primitive types called map to int. Both of these operations are stateless, meaning that they don't have to consider what's come before or after. They just take a look at each element in the stream as it goes whizzing by the behavior that's called as part of map or map to int. And they're also known as run to completion operations. And that means that unless something strange happens like an exception or your program crashes, they'll run through every element in the stream that is presented to them as an input stream. So the map function or the map intermediate operation applies a mapper function, which is actually a type function, the function functional interface. And it applies this mapper function to every element of the input stream. And it returns an output stream consisting of the results of doing the mapping. And as we'll see, the number of output stream elements must match the number of input stream elements. So if you have 25 items in your stream, then that'll come in as the input stream. The mapper function will be applied to each of those elements, and 25 elements will be generated as the output stream. Of course, if, if something strange happens, like a, a Java a null pointer exception that's not able to be handled by the mapper function, then the stream can prematurely terminate. But let's, let's assume for sake of discussion that that doesn't happen. So think about map as being applied to every element in the stream. The way we use this particular intermediate operation in the context of our simple search stream program is to use a, a behavior, a method reference called search for word that's passed to the map intermediate operation. And the idea here is that for every word in the stream, we're going to call the search for word method reference and our method, and then have that determine whether or not there's a match. And as you can see here, search for word takes in a string and returns a search results object, and therefore map applied to the search for word method reference will take in a stream of strings and return a stream of search results. So the key thing to note here is that it's entirely possible, though not required, for behaviors in a map intermediate operation to convert or transform the type in some way. So the input type and the output type could be different. It doesn't have to be, but it could be. Moreover, the, the values could also be different, as they certainly are in this case. Even if you keep the type the same, you could have different results coming out. For example, if you were doing a map that would multiply all the input by two, sort of like a double operation, then the types would be the same, but the values would be different. Notice how we use this in a, a fluent programming style with these cascading method calls to intermediate and or terminal operations. So you can see here, we take words to find, convert that into a stream of words to find. Then we apply the search for word method by using map. And then later, as we'll talk about in a couple of lessons, you can get rid of anything that's empty and then collect the results into a list. So it all flows together in a nice fluent manner. And you're just basically building a pipeline to do these types of transformations. So that's map. Map is a very, very, very common method. And you'll get lots of experience applying map in the context of the streams-based versions of the upcoming programming assignments you're doing. Let's talk next about map to int. So map to int is a variant of map. 
that returns an int stream instead of a stream of reference types. And it, it again, can the stream contents will consist of the results of applying the giving, given mapper function to all the elements in the input stream. So just like with map, it's going to apply it for all elements. Notice that int stream, which is the type that's returned by map to int, is a specialization of a stream for the int primitive. So there are things like int, long with a lowercase l, double with a lowercase d, those are all primitive operations, and they're various specializations of uh, the stream operations that would do things like map to int, map to long, map to double, and so on. And the reason that we need to have those, the reason that Java needs to have those, of course, has to do with the fact that it has basically two type systems. There's a type system for primitive types like int, long, and double with lowercase letters, and it also has a type system for so-called reference types which would be all the other stuff that are based on classes, including integer long and double with capital letters in the first, uh, as the first part of the, the type. As with regular map, map to int has a property that it maps the elements that come in in the input stream and the same number of elements come out. So you have the same number in as, as go out. The particular way we're going to use it in our program is we're going to use map to int to transform the stream of results into a stream of primitive indices. So as, as you'll see, once you run the earlier map operation, you'll end up with essentially a, a list or a stream of result objects where each result object keeps track of various pieces of metadata about where a match was found in the input string. And so what we're gonna do here is we're going to take the stream of result objects and we're gonna call map to int and we're gonna end up with a stream of ints, primitives, that indicate the index where a match was found. And then we're gonna do some other stuff to it, like we're gonna go ahead and compute the max value from that. And we'll talk about that later when we look at some of the code. As with map, map to int transforms or can transform the type of elements it processes into primitive ints. Of course, if you have a stream of primitive ints coming in, um, map to int, will continue to do that and continue to make the transformation, keep it as a primitive int. But as we see here, we, we basically take a stream of result objects, which are reference types, and then convert that into a stream of primitive types, in this case, ints. So once again, you can see how I changed the shape here to visualize the change in the type. This is how we would actually use it in our code. You can see here that once again, we have this fluent cascading style of method calls that make the pipeline for the stream. And here we take the results list, convert it to a stream, and then we use map to int to convert the stream of result objects, which are obviously reference types, into a stream of primitive ints. And we'll take a look in more detail later about how that works, and I'll walk through the code in more detail. So that's an overview of the map intermediate operations. There's some other ones. There's map to long and map to double and so, so on and so forth. But they all behave pretty much the same way as what we've looked at before. Very, very common operation, perhaps the most common operation that you normally apply in the context of a stream. And you'll get a lot of chances, I mentioned before, to, to try those in practice.